EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. Do armed police officers need more safeguarding? Officers are extremely anxious and I think it's important to put this in context. A lot of this is driven by families, many of them are under pressure from their partners, sort of wives, husbands, parents, children, who actually are saying, I'm worried about what you might go through based on your job. I'm not sure we're up for this as a family. The head of the Met, Sir Mark Rowley there, speaking at the first meeting of the new policing board. His comments come after the military was on standby over the weekend to provide support to the force. It was due to hundreds of officers standing down from firearms duties as a result of a murder charge against one of their colleagues. We're now in a position where um, the numbers are strengthening. Um, We can provide credible uh, firearms cover for London. But I must be honest, it's still significantly less than normal, which will create some difficult choices. The Scotland Yard chief has called for sufficient legal protection for armed officers and has welcomed a review into the issue. It's so critical in terms of this debate that we need a system of accountability which it's not simply about officers, of course, it's about communities, it's about families. Everyone needs confidence in a system which is, which is speedy, um, professional um, and operates absolutely without fear or favour um, and searches for the truth. Joining me now is Martin Bentham, the Evening Standard's Home Affairs Editor. Martin, why has the issue around the safeguarding of armed police officers come to a head now? The problem was prompted immediately by the decision last week to charge a Metropolitan Police Officer, a firearms officer, with the murder of Chris Cabber following the fatal shooting last September. Obviously, we can't talk about that case directly. We don't even know the circumstances precisely of what happened and so on. It's sub judice, so we can't discuss the details. But it's not the only case, but it's the late, it's the most recent one, obviously, where the police have felt, and firearms officers, I suppose, in particular, have felt that the process by which they're held to account. And in this case, obviously, this officer, as a matter of fact, now faces trial for murder, a potential life sentence if convicted. And clearly, whatever whatever actually happened in that case and in any other case where a lethal use of force, for example, would be used by an armed police officer in, in his duties, that person goes out every single day potentially on duty, potentially having to deal with a very dangerous incident. At the end of it, they're suddenly facing potentially going to to jail for life. So clearly that's a that's quite a a big thing for those officers to to face and to and the the concern has been amongst the officers and what prompted some of the officers to say they're no longer willing to take that risk in effect was the concern is that they're not getting the protection when they go and put their lives on the line as they see it to protect the public from potentially very dangerous people of whom there are some on the streets for sure that they then don't get that protection from the law themselves when they end up having to feeling they have to discharge their weapons so that's the the gist of what's happened and of course a significant number of officers stood down said they were no longer willing to do that because the the risks involved to them of finding themselves in a similar situation or facing disciplinary misconduct type hearings i independent office of police conduct investigations the, the stress and so on of all of those things meant they were no longer willing to to risk it. The the the, the army was then uh, put on standby and soldiers were actually briefly deployed in a sort of backup role to help the counterterrorism officers who might firearms officers who might have to respond to an incident. So that happened over the weekend and early on Monday morning. Military personnel were on standby and then be, began to be ready to be operational if needed by lunchtime yesterday or so. The Met said it had got enough officers on duty because the situation had been described as fluid before that. Enough officers saying they were able to do their, willing to do their job to not require that military help. But clearly there's an ongoing issue. And Sir Mark Rowley has called for an overhaul of the rules. The Home Secretary said she's going to have review. And there will be various things that will be looked at in that review, including things like the speed of investigations into these incidents. Now, that has been a concern before Sir Mark Rowley talked about this, before the, the Chris Cabber shooting decision. He talked about this and, indeed, the campaign group Inquest only a few weeks ago, which supports the families of people who've been caught up in fatal incidents of one sort or another. They themselves have been saying on the year's anniversary after the 
shooting of Chris Cabot that they wanted it, it was taking far too long for the the process of investigating deciding whether to bring a charge or not that was all taking too long and I think clearly Sir Mark Rowley in his letter referred to a case involving another fatal shooting of Jermaine Baker and in which the officer concerned although there's been inquest findings and and so on and no decision to charge the officer there the there's still a potential gross misconduct case eight years on from that shooting facing the officer because of a direction by the independent office of police conduct now i think that the reality is whatever your whatever the rights and wrongs of specific incidents are it's clear that it's not in anybody's interests whether it be the officer's concerned the families of the person who might who has died or has suffered use of force in a different context without a, without it being a lethal one in any of those incidents it's not in anybody's interest for independent office of police conduct investigations to drag on for a great length of time for any prosecution process to take a great length of time and for there being no resolution for anybody and from the police point of view what they feel as well is that the risks the specific risks that they're taking on behalf of the public are not being taken adequately into account that's what the underlying concern of the police is and that they're not just in the prosecution the level of prosecution but in the, in respect of investigations length investigations the balance of probability used to decide whether misconduct for example has occurred or not that, that all those balances are not correctly being sort of skewed against them and not adequately taking into account uh, the job that they're doing and the challenges that they face in doing that job that's the the gist of what the the situation is as we stand Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more from our Home Affairs editor, Martin Bentham, about what current legal protections armed officers have. Welcome back. Still with me is the Evening Standards Home Affairs editor, Martin Bentham. Martin, are there currently any legal protections in place to protect armed police officers then? Well, very much so, because the ordinary law applies to a police officer in these circumstances. And whatever happens, that will still remain the case, frankly. It's inconceivable that the police could be given a complete blank check to fire their weapons, which they do very, very rarely. I mean, Sir Mark Rowley pointed out that they get caught about 4,000 incidents and, and they only fire about twice a year in London. So it's a very rare thing when this happens. But but no, the, the, the normal law applies and you have a right of self-defence. And, and if an officer has a reasonable held belief that his life or those of colleagues are in danger, or indeed the member of the public, for example, because it could happen with the member of the public, that they are entitled, if they have that reasonably held belief, to fire their weapon, in in essence, in self-defence of them or some other person. And that's quite a high threshold. There have been very, very few prosecutions of the sort that we're now going to see in the Chris Cabot case. There was one other that I can recall in the case called Azel Rodney, where an officer was charged he was acquitted, in fact, by the jury, so even that one didn't uh, stand up. And of course, some of the families and, and campaigners, so to speak, have argued that the that not enough times are police held to account for what happens. That's the flip side of the argument. But uh, but there certainly is a legal protection for officers. It's it's and it's quite a high hurdle actually for the Crown Prosecution Service to get over to be able to prove that an officer didn't have a reasonably held belief that they were in in mortal danger or that somebody else was in mortal danger. So, of course, we'll we'll wait and see in this case what happens when the jury uh, gets to hear the case, assuming it goes to a, you know, goes all the way through the process to a jury trial at the end of it. But that's, yes, that legal protection very much exists, as it it does sort of, in a sense, for any member of the public who has a right of self-defence in a life-threatening situation. As you mentioned earlier, armed forces had to step in over the weekend after a backlash meant there weren't enough armed officers. Is there a concern that this is going to be an ongoing issue of not enough officers willing to be armed moving forward? I mean, there are, there are different views about this. I mean, of course, first of all, it will depend on what the outcome of the reviews are and, and the requests by Sir Mark Rowley for the various changes to the way that misconduct and, pros- and and the prosecution thresholds and so on. And indeed, and what the Home Office decides, the Home Office says it's going to conduct this review very swiftly. And I suppose part of the answer is it will depend what the outcome of that is. Clearly, I would think from the police point of view, and I think we've seen this a little bit in the in the last day or so, that the fact there is a review, the fact that Sir Mark Rowley has come out so strongly in saying we need to look at these rules because they're not giving ad- adequate protection to my officers doing these very dangerous jobs, that will reassure some people. But obviously, ultimately, it will it will depend on each individual officer and, and whether they think that the safeguards that are there to protect them while carrying out their job 
are adequate. And of course, the other the other point has been made by some people that uh, people who do these firearms jobs they volunteer for it. They don't. They can't be compelled to do it. And but some of them like it. And the alternative is doing some other type of policing, which they may not may not want to do as much, despite the the risk of being a firearms officer. And and of course, as I just said, they actually fire very very rarely. So uh, the, the sort of situation that occurred and has occurred in the Chris Cabber case and in one or two others doesn't generally occur. Most firearms officers do their job day in, day out without ever firing a weapon and therefore never end up in that in that uh, situation. So, so we, it remains to be seen, but clearly, yes, the problem is not not resolved. It will bubble away. And and it goes to a wider issue because Sir Mark Rowley talked about use of force more generally, not just when guns are fired, but in terms of, and he's talked about this prior against the Chris Cabot case when police are involved in in chases, for example, and, and somebody crashes. It's cases like that that can also drag on for a very long time from a police point of view. And the officer may officer or officer's concern may have done nothing wrong. And again, they they feel that they're subjected to a very protracted investigation, which is in, inevitably very stressful for them, whether they are absolutely convinced that nothing will be found at the end of it. And so there is a wider issue here as well as the actual one of just lethal shootings that occur so it's yes it's far from resolved it'll it'll come back i think as an issue potentially either resolved or unresolved and and then we'll see what happens you can read more on this story and others in the evening standard newspaper or on our website standard.co.uk and that's it from this episode of the leader this podcast is back tomorrow at 4 p.m